falling for nobody else. So I was right. It's a new day. I ran out of time yesterday. Don't judge me though. I'm wearing the same clothes. Because I got dirty and disgusting yesterday. I might as well keep the same ones dirty and disgusting, right? <sighs> okay, so. Today, what we're gonna do is actually go use the mechanical aerator that I have as a tow behind aerator. And we're going to aerate the side of the lawn that's in the super shade cover. And then we're gonna throw down some, some seat. So here's the grass types in this, if you can read this. This is a Taos, tall fescue, frontio perennial ryegrass, tanto, tall fescue, Eugene creeping red fescue, harpoon hard fescue. Okay, so you can see here, uh, this is the area that we're gonna be throwing it. We'll do a little bit in here, but I'm most concerned about the area that's right over here by this mulch pit, right? But right after this tree, or this little branch here, there's a spot over here that's completely just bare dirt. This is a little bit here, which is where I will throw a little bit seed here, but this has bluegrass in it, and this does spread, and this does fill out a lot. I'm not worried about this area that much. Now, there's a lot of trees in this area. We have one, I mean, two and three. That's the edge of the wood line, but they still have pretty big canopies. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, this little one, and eleven. And this eleventh one actually splits into four or five different trees you can see. So let's just take a look at the canopy here. This is the one closest to me. This is an oak tree. And then over here, you can just see the canopies on these trees are just massive. So I only get a little bit of sun through here. And then as the sun sets, which is over this way, when the sun gets about this region, this little strip gets sunlight. That is why I can hardly get anything to grow in here. There's just not enough sun to do anything. This is my aerator. It is by Agrifab. I don't know if you can read that or not. Agrifab. This is a plug aerator, so it's not a slit aerator. This guy does grab some pretty good plugs when the soil is wet. You can see there, there's just nice and nice and tall. That one goes all the way up to here. That's probably about three inches or so, which is what you want for a plug. The ones on the end spin independently of each other, so they can spin at different rates than these other ones. Then there's a pair of two, and then a pair of two, and then another single one. But all these can spin independently, like I said, so that's super nice. You don't have the same pattern consistently if you do multiple passes in the lawn. Anyway, this system is just fantastic. This is a release lever, so when you're driving, you can pull this lever to actually raise and lower the tines to push them into the lawn. You want to use that when you drive over like your driveway, for example. You don't want the tines hitting into your driveway, so you'd pull this lever and lock it, and that lifts the tines up for transport. Then we also have a spot where you can lay weights to actually help push those tines down deeper into the ground. Now, a lot of people use cinder blocks for this, and that probably works fine, but those are not heavy enough for me. I actually put some of my bags of Milo on this guy. I put about four bags on there, so that's about 140 pounds, and then that really gets deep down into the dirt. I'm falling, show me the ring and I'll jump right through. I used to. Show 
me the ring and I'll jump right through. Show me the ring and I'll jump right through. I do this every fall, so I'm used to it, but it's like the most annoying thing in the world to have to do, though. I wish this lever was a little bit longer so I could stay on the mower and do it. it might be a project for me in the future to weld something on that. All right, so I want to show you guys a plug that this pulls, but the ground here is actually in such bad shape the plugs are like disintegrating as they get pushed out of the tine. They're just disintegrating. So here's one of them. But like you can see it's just so dry. They're just like disintegrating. Like here's a good couple right here. That's the depth that it's taken out right now. See, just even touching it, it's just coming apart like crazy. Even with all the rain and the water that we've had. This area would be fantastic to get some humates in. But also, I wanted to show you how compacted. So I got a screwdriver. This is the longest thing that I have to test this with. We're just gonna try to push this in the ground. Oh my God, look at that. That's as far as I can go. That's very compacted. That one's a little bit better. A little bit better there. Okay, so we got some bad spots. Some that are pretty decent. gonna judge me now but uh, I don't have any topsoil and I had an idea that I wanted to try now you should know that I don't really care what happens to that spot over there it's kind of like it's kind of like a test plot right I, it doesn't get a whole lot of Sun so grass doesn't grow anyway I don't really care if it takes off or or not um, since I don't have any topsoil, I do have potting soil. I know, I know. Uh, this is gonna be a test. I used potting soil in a couple little pots. Um, that I actually grew grass seed in because I wanted to see the differences between a tall fescue blade and a Kentucky bluegrass blade. Um, I'm also going to do the same test with actually ryegrass, but that's, that's another story. So I'm actually going to throw this potting mix down on top of the seed to act like you would a peat moss or a topsoil. Um, I'm not going to cover it super deep because I don't have enough for the whole entire area, but I just want a, a little bit of a coating on there to help keep the soil just a little bit moist. So again, don't judge me. That's what we're going to do now. <laughs> 